want to pass on to Claire, the go-to person for accessibility. And um, I'm going to be talking about the website Builder, the element for learning Spanish. So um, let me introduce you to Claire. Hi, so I'm here to talk about um, WordPress page builders and how accessible are they, or rather how accessible is the content that they produce. So just a quick summary of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk a little bit about accessibility needs and requirements, and then we're going to look into two popular page builders, Builder Builder and Elementor. Then we're going to look into the, what the page builders actually do. They, they have templates, modules, and widgets. So I tested some of these to see what accessibility issues they might have. And then finally, summing up, what, what could they do better? And, and what do you need to think about if you're using them? So very quick summary here. This is um, the four principles of accessibility um, as given in the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. It's, uh, it's four elements, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust, which spell the acronym for. Um, so going through each of these, perceivable means that you should be able to get hold of that content in any way through the senses. So that's predominantly sight or hearing, but in some cases um, it might be touch. So if you notice the picture on the previous slide, that's a refreshable braille display, which is converting the uh, text on the screen or whatever to uh, something that the user can feel on the sensor pad. Then operable, whatever means you use to access a website, whether that's a mouse or a keyboard or a switch control or whatever it is, or, or switching on your smartphone, you should be able to operate the, the controls. Understandable means it's predictable, it's consistent, and it's appropriate for the audience. And finally, robust is standards compliant, and it works across various devices, desktop, laptop, um, tablet and phone. But we're mainly going to focus here on the first two categories, perceivable and operable. So these are the kind of issues that I wanted to look for within the page builder ecosystem. So starting with the um, first one, it's images and icons. Are they labeled appropriately for people with sight loss who would otherwise not get the meaning from them? And in fact, if they don't have any meaning at all, are they ignored because you don't want uh, decorative content read out to people? That's just a waste of their time. Then looking at colour contrast of items, um, the difference between the foreground and the background, is it enough to clearly make out text or are there any issues or problems there? And keyboard operation is pretty important for both um, people who are reliant on using a keyboard who can't use a mouse and for people who use a screen reader application where they are heavily dependent on keystrokes to do things. So can they get to everything with the keyboard? Um, focus is important as well. Can they actually see where they are on the page when they're navigating through it? So that will be through uh, links, buttons, and form fields. And if there's moving content on the page, have they got some way to pause it, stop it, or hide it if they can only use the keyboard? So these were the, the tools that I was using to test my content, starting with um, the NVDA screen reader, which is a free and open source screen reader for Windows. Anyone can download it. And that it pairs well with Firefox browser. Certain screen readers work better with certain browsers. And if you're a Mac user, I tested a bit on Mac as well, and I was using the VoiceOver screen reader, which is built into iOS. It's not just on Mac, it's on um, iPad and iPhone as well. And that, that works best with Safari. And then the keyboard, obviously, to, to get through the pages. The most important key in that, as you can see in the graphic, is the tab key, which is what you'd normally use to go forward through the page to whatever is interactive. You use shift and tab to get backwards. So you use enter key to activate um, links and buttons. And also, you can use the space bar for buttons as well. 
So moving on to um, our page builders. Uh, does anyone here use Gator Builder? No one? <laughs> So anyway, it is a very popular page builder. It's got um, over 400,000 installed, active installs. But the free version is very limited. It's only got six modules as part of it. So really, you have to get the premium version really to be able to do anything much with it. But with that, you also get a bunch of templates for landing pages and pre-built content pages to save you time. So here's an example of a beaver builder. Um, and this one's called the Bite Me 2. And you can see it's made up of different elements on the page. So you've got heading at the top, uh, you've got some text, you've got photographs, and then you can see four different number counters. So it's split into rows, and then in that one, the, the number counters, it's four different columns. And finally, at the bottom, you've got a testimonial slider. Um, and then moving on to the second page that I was going to look at, which is Elementor. And this one is really widely popular. They've just passed the 4 million active installs uh, landmark. Um, and the free version of this is actually surprisingly functional. You've got 30 widgets, as they call them, in Elementor. The pro version has got another 52. And then you get a whole bunch of templates, free and pro, for this one as well. And here's an example of an elementary template, and that's not even, I couldn't even fit the whole thing in the screen easily. So that's just part of it, and you can see it's built quite a number of different widgets all within that. So you've got um, images, you've got contact form at the bottom, you've got social icons, buttons, and so on. So that's moving on to my testing. Uh, one of the first things I tested was um, Beaver Builder's social icon module, uh, which comes from the icon group, and that can be found on a template called One Page Subscribe. So I'm going to point out what was the good and not so good here. Um, something like this, where it's just basically the icons, social media icons, there's no text associated with it. So you do need some way to tell a screen reader user what the icons actually represent. So they've used uh, the ARIA label um, for that. They've also put an ARIA hidden on the icons, and that's also good because some screen readers would, or other bits of tech, would try and read out the actual icon font, and, we, and you don't want that. The not so good part is, if you can see on the graphic, um, everything that they have called, you know, all these three different social icons, they all say linked to you at the beginning. And that's not necessary because screen readers will announce something as a link when they get to it. And the other really clunky thing is that they put in the entire URL, so if you can imagine that being read out, um, that is just not a good user experience at all. Now, this is Elementor's version of uh, social icons. Um, this is one on uh, this one from a template landing page stylist. Now, this is uh, a bit better in some ways because you can see, if you can look at the speech viewer um, representation here, this is what is actually read, read out the screen reader, and you'll see it says visited link Facebook and visited link Twitter and so on. So it's not reading out URLs which is a good thing. They've also done it a slightly different way rather than ARIA label. They've used um, what called screen reader text. They put a special class on it, Elementor screen only. And then it, uh, it just reads out Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc. Uh, the bad thing about it on this particular template is they didn't actually put any link destinations in and they put the links open in a new tab. So it meant when I tried it out, it was basically reopening on the same page over again, uh, but in a new tab, which is not, not good at all. Um, you can, of course, change these things in the um, settings. The, the downside with the Beaver Builder one was I don't think there was any way to actually change it from moving out these uh, URLs. But with the elementary settings, you can turn off the option for the new tab, and you can put your own link destinations as well, as you would expect.
this is a specific model in Beaver Builder. We're moving on to forms now, and this is the version of the Sprite form. So this is for signing up to MailChimp, another email marketing service. So I don't know if you can spot anything just as you look at this as to what might be wrong with this particular form. Well, there are a few problems here. Um, first of all, we don't have visible labels on the form. Uh, we've just got the placeholder text. And the problem with the placeholder text is that um, when you put the cursor in to write in that um, form field, then it disappears. Now, you might think, oh, well, there's only a couple of them there. You know, you'd have to have really bad memory not to remember what they are. But still, it's not, it's not good practice. And the other thing is that the, the, the name and the email address, placeholders, are so faint to read. I mean, I can barely make them out myself. It's very light gray and white. The other thing is um, at the bottom here where I click the sign up button and um, it will say it will give you the um, messages into your name and address, but it didn't tell me um, straight off which were the required fields, which just seems like a silly thing not to do for a form. Uh, another problem was that when I actually used the keyboard just to get onto the button, there was no kind of indicator, there was no outline around it or anything to actually indicate that I'm on that sign up button to click it, so I, I could have missed that completely. Uh, the error messages are not read out to you if you're a screen reader, um, which is another issue. And in fact, if you tab between the two tools, enter your name and enter an email, these, these error messages disappear. So if you're a sighted keyboard user, again, that's, um, that's not good. And finally, for some reason, instead of using a native button for the sign up button, they have decided to make it into a link and stick a bit of barrier on it to say actually this is a the button. But this is not, ARIA is used to enhance um, HTML, it's not really meant to be a substitute and the first rule of ARIA use is don't use ARIA if there is a perfectly valid HTML element. So this, this form has major problems and unfortunately a lot of them are not able to be remedied by changing settings in that module. Elementor's version, you can see it's simple, we've just got the one field and we've got the button, but it's still got some issues. Um, they do actually have a form label on this one, but it's hidden, it's, it's available if you're a screen reader user, so that's nice for them, but if you're a sighted keyboard user, then you've got to make do with the placeholder text. Uh, another issue we've got here is the email field has not been marked as required, so it's actually possible to submit this form without putting in anything at all, which just seems a bit daft to me. Moving on then to the Verbal's contact form, um, and it's the subscribe template that this one's on. So we, this is a bit better. Oops, sorry. Too far. Uh, a bit better, it's got the visible label, so you can see it says name, email, your message. Yes, it's still got the placeholders as well, but at least it's got visible labels. But again, they didn't bother to tell us which ones were the required fields. And also the error messages are not really adequate, they're, they're not really uh, indicated very well for, for screen readers. And yet again, they have used um, something that's not a button element for the send button. So this is Elementor's uh, contact form from one of their templates, uh, the digital agency contact one, and um, maybe you can spot the issues with it. Um, this one has got labels and correctly and programmatically they're associated with controls. But yeah, when I say they've got labels, you can't actually see the labels, and that is because they're hidden them and they put them in the screen reader text. And again, we've got the placeholder text substituting for the labels when why can't we just have the labels? Because labels don't disappear when you type them fields. We've definitely got a problem with the color contrast on the button at the bottom. It, it looks a bit strange on the screen, but um, in their example, it's, it's a sort of cyan blue red text on it. Um, when I tried it on my own 
version of the, um, an elementary site it was, it was blue with light blue with white, but either way it's, it's not good enough colour contrast. Again, error messages, not really informative enough. It says please fill in this field, but are you going to know which field that refers to? And you'll also see the red border around uh, the email field there when you've left that one blank. And uh, if you were colorblind, you know, would that be enough to indicate that there was a problem with that form? You, you, you ideally, the developers would have put something else in to indicate the error, like a little um, exclamation point or something. So some of these problems with the settings, they can, they can be remediated. You, you can get the label to show, you can use um, you can add to the pliers to the labels or you can um, add little asterisks on them as well. Um, so you can make a better form, but it's still not perfect. The, the error message is really hard to get that, that right because ideally what you want to do is if someone's um, submitting the form, they're using a screen reader, you want to give them a little sort of summary of all the errors and then link to where they are on the form. Um, I'm not going to show like an actual moving demo of the slideshow. This is like the first slide in a slideshow. But basically, this is just moving images across, nothing more than that. The big problem with this is it's automatically set to autoplay, and there's no way to pause it. And these navigation arrows that you can see on it, they're not keyboard accessible. And as far as the screen reader is concerned, it just completely ignores everything in it. Nobody is going to get any content from that. Even you put the images in, then you know there's background images which you can't add all text to anyway. You could add some controls to it. There is an option where you can add some controls to it, but it's it's still not great. It's still got some issues. Uh, elementary version of an image carousel, but uh, this one is uh, different logos. But um, it just one moves across at a time, and I think there's seven and there's five on display at any one time. And again, they've chosen to have it automatically auto play, and you cannot pause it. Another issue with this particular implementation is um, they've given the, the alternative text for all of these logos is taken from the image name. So you've got something like 4.png or something, which is absolutely hopeless and is not going to give any information to a screen reader user whatsoever. Right, so now we do the Beaver Builder Testimonials module. Um, again, this is a carousel, um, and these are the two different um, testimonials, and basically they're cycling around after a few seconds, it swipes across, and the next one comes into view, and, and so on and so on. Well, this one's got real, real big problems. Again, we've got the autoplay. Um, and the text is moving, I can't remember how many seconds it is, but it moves so fast that you just cannot read all the information one. And even though both of these um, example ones are exactly the same lower nips and text, you know, if you had real text and it was moving like that, it, you know, I, would, I wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. Uh, there's no way of pausing it with the keyboard. And then when you actually want to use these arrows as controls, when you get um, use the tab key to get onto them, you cannot see which arrow you're on. Which again, how is anyone supposed to control that that way? And another thing that bugs me is that the, the order of the arrows is the focus is wrong from my point of view because I can see the previous arrow is first in the visual order than the next arrow, but they've chosen to put the focus on the next arrow first and then the previous, which, which I don't think makes sense. Uh, you've got another bizarre decision, let's put ARIA pressed on a link because, you know, ARIA is good and it makes things more accessible, except that it doesn't. And it doesn't make any sense to have it on a link if it was a toggle button, but you're not, but it's not. And I think the worst thing of all is that um, when I tried it with the NVD screen, NVD screen reader, it read the whole content each testimonial like twice. And then I was browsing going down the page, and as soon as the testimonial scrolled across to the next one, then it started reading it all again. And you just wouldn't be able to get anything else done on the page with that. 
This is the elemental one. Um, I did have a I did have an animated gift, this, but I chose to take it out because I just thought it was too annoying. I've just got a quick video here. So again, you can see it's just automatically swiping across. So again, problems with this. Um, it also plays, and there was no, there was no way of causing it with the keyboard, and in fact, there's no controls on it at all. And yes, you can. You can actually. You can stop the auto play on both the Beaver Builder one and the Elemental one. Um, and you can add controls to this one. You can add um, some of these little dots at the bottom, and you can add uh, forward and back arrows. But they've still got issues. The, the, the dots were absolutely tiny, quite difficult to make out. The focus on them isn't very clear. The focus on the no, the colour contrast on the arrows is pretty poor because they're light grey, and again, you can't see the focus around them. So this is just, in general, carousels, should you use them? And I would argue, no. Um, and there's various reasons, not just the accessibility issues, but if you are to, say, turn off the play completely and you expect the user to go forward and back, then, you know, nine users at a time just won't bother. They just look at what's on that first slide and then, you know, just ignore the rest of it. There's also, like, a kind of banner blindness where people are so used to seeing these things that they kind of filter them out and they ignore them. So, last set of things that I was going to consider from the um, Eagle Benwick Border and Elementary Complex is uh, accordions and toggles. There is a debate about what constitutes an accordion or a toggle. In general, an accordion um, is thought you know, that you will have one item open at a time, you press the plus and you see some content underneath. Uh, with a toggle, you could you could actually open all of them at the same time, accordion just the one, like the musical instrument. Well, again, we've got some problems with Beaver Builder's uh, version of the accordion, and unfortunately, they, we can't fix them all ourselves. Um, one problem we've got here is that when you actually do use the keyboard to open one of these, you, you find there's actually three different elements that will um, that you have to pad through to do it, and that's a bad user experience. You've got hidden div with a with a tab in it of zero. You have got that, that title there uh, that opens it up, and then you've got the little plus and the minus symbol as well. So it's like why have three different things to do the same job. It's just not necessary and it just gives the user more work. And then again we've got some area that's been kind of thrown at the thing to try and allegedly make it more accessible but it doesn't really do it. They decided to give the whole um, the whole structure uh, an area roll of tablets I think it is. And that's that's not very ideal because these are not tabs. The, the, this is a different kind of design. So Elementor's one, is this any better? Well, there's a couple of things. You can at least see with this one, once you've opened it, you can see that the title is um, changed colour and you can actually see a bit of focus around it, that, that board around it. But again, They've also used an area roll of tablets. It's not a tablet, it's an accordion or a toggle. And if you have to be a screen user, user, you do not have any way of knowing that when you are focused on something that there is some hidden content there because it doesn't tell you whether it's expanded or collapsed. So what do we make of this summing up? Um, Basically, if you're going to use these page builders and you want an accessible website, you need to check the default settings of these different things. I mean, I've used examples from um, I've, I've used examples from the templates. If you just create a brand new page and you stick a new module or widget on, then sometimes they're a little bit better the defaults. But you, you are going to have to check. 
um, with the social media icons, I would definitely watch links within the new window. You want to avoid that if possible. And we need to get be able to get improve these uh, icon labels because reading out URLs is, is not good. So when it comes to forms, I would argue that um, you'd be better using a form plugin. But having said that, you know it's difficult to build accessible forms anyway, and um, none. Of, I don't think any of the form plugins I know are actually accessible out of the box. Um, Gravity Forms is, I know, working on it, uh, but they're not quite there yet. Sliders and carousels, yes, I mean, they look flashy and nice and clients love them, but do we really need them? You know, they're just hard. They're just hard to make accessible. And with the accordions and toggles, I would say um, there are actually some better created examples online. And um, what we should be doing if we want to use these things and we want to use these page builders is say to the developers, look, could you take one of the existing um, accessible accordion patterns and you implement that rather than you know, trying to remediate something that you've done that's maybe flawed. So I'm not expecting anyone to break what you've done. This is just links if you want some further reading. If you want to have a look at the templates yourself, you can go to um, the Google site and the Elementary site and, and browse through them and try them for yourself. I've also written a couple of posts going into a bit more depth and nice, you know, a bit more about the code side. I'm just trying not to put all that in the presentation just now. Um, a whole bunch of videos, um, just testing various of these things if you, if you want to watch them at your leisure and, and you can see um, a bit more about the problems I found. But I didn't want to include video on the presentation because it's still can't put audio in it, so you know, I just had that very short cut. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you. I think that's a terrible kind of question because in a way I won't say neither. Neither. But of the two I would have said elementary was better, but I'd still not use certain bits of it. Top question now. Does anyone have any questions at all about not just this also accessibility in general as well? Do you have any questions? I take it that by your answer, you are completely ruling out Gutenberg altogether. Well, I think Gutenberg is a bit of a different case. I think I did, I, I, uh, no, when it came out, the accessibility of it, and I did look at it and write about it at the time, it really wasn't very good when it was first launched, but the WordPress accessibility team, which is still quite a small team, are, are working pretty hard on uh, remediating all the things, although the development speed of it was that fast that my speed is always going to be new things coming out, but you know, um, yeah, they, they have they have worked quite hard. There was a really uh, thorough audit uh, for WP Campus on Gutenberg, and they have been basically working through the tickets of things down there and, and triaging through and fixing them as they do the food. I mean, I don't have much experience of page builder, um, but everything I wanted to do on the website. I think just Gutenberg is the page builders are sort of more mature, maybe for like building particular layers. But I think it's just that hidden thing of oh, we'll just you know bung up something quickly. This looks quite nice, but not necessarily or realizing that the underlying problems in it. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, I remember a few months ago I did a talk about Elementor, but one of the things that I didn't look at was how it was accessible to others, so it was quite interesting to hear your talk on the accessibility side of it. And also, um, I also had a lot of problems with the contact forms mm -hmm. for um, getting them to appear visible. Yeah. They always had trouble like blending into the background, I couldn't get the background colour up and also it just appeared as lines, I couldn't get the white boxes, so it was good to hear that it wasn't just me that had that problem. Oh, it was just, yeah. Um, 
you've got a good genetic to use my parasol. Well, probably the simplest one is just to have a, like a hero image, so it's just like a large image um, where you might have um, text overlaid or something on it. But even if you do that, if you overlay text on it, then you've got to start thinking about you know, what's it going to look like if the screen was uh, magnified or something like that, and the text going to kind of drop off the image or you know, bits of it become unreadable, that sort of thing. It's just, um, I think, a lot of thought and a lot of testing as well. Good time for one more. Hi, thanks. Uh, when you say it's difficult to build accessible forms, is that just with WordPress page builders or is that a general thing? Um, well, I don't think the page builders, because they're not dedicated form plugins, I don't think they've maybe got as good forms as the dedicated form plugins. But I know even like the gravity forms at the moment, there's another plugin that you can add onto it to make it more accessible. But you sort of then think, well, why didn't they just make it accessible in the first place? But I know that there is work ongoing on that at the moment, so I'm just hoping to hear like in a few months, maybe um, we've made it more accessible and this is, you know, the default acceptable form plugin we should use. Sort of thing. But obviously that's a paid plugin too, so not everyone is going to, um, you know, afford it or, or want to use it. Thanks very much, and don't forget Claire is on for the book of the day. If you want to talk to her, that would be to do that. Um, she'll be able to help you out. And uh, if you can talk to her, a round of applause one more time.